tell you, for some time now, I've been, you know, asking Ortor to, to make some kind of an enclosure for their lasers, and um, I think they finally listened. This is one of the first ones, I think, shipped in America. It's for my Laser Master 2. They also make one for the Pro model. Uh, comes in a fairly large box, and uh, we'll do an unpacking in a second, but you can see it seems to be all there. So uh, let's start opening this up and uh, removing the parts and see what's in here. All right. Now it is really uh, one of the most important things that you can have with a laser. Um, I see people using these things all the time with you know, no ventilation and uh, they create dangerous fumes and uh, put vapors in the air. and. Then I see some people improperly venting them. I like putting a big fan in the, their window and just letting it suck all the air out of the room. Well, in a tight house, that's not such a good idea. Uh, you can actually pull fumes back through your appliances while you're doing that. So you really should, you know, you should have a, a nice controlled way to vent them. And also, not you have to look at your house too, because a lot of times you'll need to make up for the air that comes out in newer houses that are tight. But um, this, this looks like it's got a nice airflow that'll be just right and it, you know, it should work in most homes. So we'll see. Uh, pretty much it's really, really packed nice. It really layered it all. Um, it's nice heavy. It looks like it's about 16 thick sheet metal and all the different pieces. Front panel, it's a little bit thinner, but they do do a nice job with their finishing. And let's see, what do we got here? Boy, this is like a big saw puzzle. This appears to be the back. Yeah, it, it, I will say, um, the final price of it wound up being a, a little bit pricey, but. For what you get and what you you know you use it for, it's a specialty item. And along with what's been going on with inflation lately, uh, I know a couple of weeks ago I was paying two dollars a gallon for gas, and now I'm actually uh, paying almost four. So you know, the big, there's a lot of inflation going on now, so these prices have risen from what they originally were gonna release it at I've seen. Oh, wow, what a job they did unpacking this. Everything is really packed nice. I didn't expect them to put this much work into this packaging. Right now before I touch it the finish on everything is flawless. God there are a lot of parts to it. Can't wait to get it together and see exactly how it works. So that's it, everything's unpacked. Um, what a fantastic job they did at packing this stuff. Here, and I'll show you what you get. Uh, there's a hose that appears to be approximately three inch size. And it does come with a excellent instruction manual. Some stainless steel plates it looks like for the base of it. Um, Everything you need to assemble it. There's some plastic hinges, handles, or the fan, power supply, really nice gas struts. Um, all the hardware is packaged like that. Um, that's either the top, the front pieces, and the two sides. Now this will be really nice to you know have a fireproof enclosure for my laser. And I would like to thank Made the Best for sponsoring this video. They actually sent this out to me and um, they really are doing good so far from what I see. They warehouse most of their items in the United States with quick shipping and you know they're starting to get hooked up with Amazon and stuff. So definitely check out their website and uh, you know if you're going to buy one please uh, use my links that I have put down below. So let's get to the assembly and I'm not going to go through it line item at a time because I know or Tor has put together a really good video on this, so I'll just kind of bounce through and uh, you know pick up different areas. Uh, first thing to note is the model I have is for the Laser Master 2 only, 
and that's what the front panel on it looks like. You can see I've made some changes to my wiring and stuff when I upgraded to this uh, newer compressed spot laser. But first thing I'll be doing is pulling it off my cart. I guess the only thing left on the cart is a smaller tour with the vertical table there for you can see that table can give me several inches underneath it for um, bigger parts so let's pull this off of here because you have to start by putting some brackets on okay so the first thing to do is get these mounting brackets on and one thing that I found out when I first put them on I put them with both screws in there and I had to take them off and this is just kind of redo you have to make sure that the outer screw is in that outer track and the same with this one and then if we look at the back there's two brackets that go back there too so that's you know a real easy install there and then it's time to put the back panel you can on. see I got this right side panel on and I'm just gonna put the left side one on and show you how easy everything goes together um, Tour really does a great job on these things. Uh, all the holes always seem to line up on your products and uh, they go right together easy so and this is no different than the rest of them. Just follow the instructions and use the right nuts and bolts that they recommend. So that's pretty much the uh, two sides in the front and the back. Let me just get this tightened up. These funny little wrenches, they, they look funny, but they work good. Now it's time to put the bases in and I'm not sure if I assembled this in the optimum way, but that's how they showed it. So you do have to bow this one up a little bit to get it to slide in place. And you gotta remember not to tighten all the screws before you do this too. And there we go. That's gonna be really nice having this total steel enclosure. A little boat up there in the middle for some reason. Probably when I tighten everything down, that'll go away. Okay, now I'm trying to put this front panel on and I got one screw in there, but you can see I can't get this other one in there. Um, there's two screw heads here that are pushing this panel out just far enough that it won't sit in there right. So I'm gonna have to just take and fly out a little bit around here to get this panel to go back tight against that without bending. I'm not sure if I got just an older model or there you can see if you pick it up and stretch it but when you let it sit on the base that's what you get. So I'm gonna just file them out a little bit. Okay, so two seconds later you can see where I just took a little rat tail file and just filed out and then it sits flat in there and everything. I'm not sure if it's, you know, I've got one of the original units or maybe flatheads or something in there now. So that's another option. You could put a flathead in there, but just one little thing that I ran into so Getting far. ready to put the fan in. So you can see you want it with the wires coming out here and I plugged it in to make sure which way it goes. And then there's this little piece that goes on there. Then there are some M4 by 35 screws in this little bag. And there's also nuts in there. But for some reason they put M3 nuts in with the M4 bolts, so um, I think that's going to be a problem. And then these bolt heads were socket heads, they're just about the same size as that plastic, so I do have some washers around here and I'm going to throw a little flat washer on each side before I put them together and they just go in here like that. 
Yeah, man, I put that top on that was just a simple matter of a couple bolts and then there's these little reinforcement brackets that go in here before you put the last bolts in and this is all going to be for the uh, gas struts and things for the hinges And again, everything, uh, you know, fit right together here. Okay, I put these hinges on. And one thing that I ran into a problem with is the uh, 10 millimeter long screws that to go with them. Um, some of them have got like an oversized pocket in the head. And uh, this wrench I came with would strip right out. So I had to go for a um, oversized inch size wrench to be able to tighten them so that's something you might want to be aware of there's two different uh, size pockets in the screws you see some of them are small and this one won't fit in it but this fits in so they seem to have come from different batches and you know, just another little thing and then you want to put the hinge on first and then you pop these handles in later it makes it easier to have room to get in here and work So here it is all together in the end. I the instruction manual is excellent, easy to follow. So you know, just follow that. I did come up with a couple extra screws, and actually there were enough M4 nuts. Those fan nuts you take from another bag. These little M3 nuts that were with the fan bolts actually are extra for if you're going to mount an offline controller on the side. But there it is. Um, Really nice gas spring on it. Works nice. Uh, everything clears. It's a completely fireproof enclosure. Got all my wiring in there working out pretty good and stuff. And you know, it looks like a really nice option if you're looking for an enclosure. Um, something with some safety and a way to control the fumes in these lasers. Closer. I did wind up drilling another hole in the side there for a wire. And you can see I've got some different sheathing on my wire because I went back and added this ground which I have running out the front to plug in. But plenty of room for everything to, to move and the wires to clear and stuff. So it's nice. Got the um, plastic that's supposed to be rated for the laser to make it safe because these lasers here actually have no nothing on them to protect your eyes and it's, it doesn't look too bad it plan on taking about two hours honestly to assemble it it um there are quite a few screws that you have to put in and um here's the hose that comes out the back now let's turn that on it does have a fairly nice airflow in it and i'm not going to fire it up right this second I'll do another video shortly because I actually have to build a new stand for it um, it just won't work on this other stand anymore so time to move up and uh, make a new stand so that's it that's what it looks like now would I make changes to it if I were you know gonna make this myself or make a different one and I would say yes uh, first thing I don't like about it is uh, the maintenance factor. This uh, this laser is actually screwed in here tight now and the two screws on the back are easy to get to but these brackets on the front you'd never get it out of here without taking it half apart. So I'm gonna say that that laser should be made easily removable. I might change some brackets and stuff to do that. And one other thing I would do is I would take this this base here and I would actually cut out a hole in it for so you could use a rotary put it over the rotary or over a big top to engrave on and just make a removable steel plate like this. Um, you know the steel plate is nice but could even just uh, make it so you could drop the laser out through the bottom just pick the enclosure off it but you know that's one just one concern that I have um, 
but otherwise it you know everything fits good it looks like it's gonna work and we'll see next video how it does collecting all the uh, the fumes and dust and getting them out and one thing I would like to warn you is that you know this should be properly run out a window it's not too long it's maybe about five feet long but you don't want to just stick this out a window and leave the window open because it can just turn around and suck the fumes right back into your room so you're probably going to want to make something to to close off whatever you know close in the window or something but venting these things uh, you know you got to be think about it carefully because different houses have different tightness built into them and you know some have like solid fuel appliances that if you pull a vacuum in the house you can actually pull the fumes back in the house too so you know but, uh, but basically this is uh I think it's a great start to uh great way to you know enclose a laser and um it block it off so people don't don't get hit in the eye by the uh actual laser itself any reflections and uh, it should make it so that you could actually you know use this in a office environment almost like a, a production laser um once you got everything all set up so like i said i'll do another update video using it uh real soon sure glad that or tour is kind of headed in this direction now and uh, starting to look at these things as being able to use them in a um you know any kind of environment or in a production environment and uh you know home use and stuff to make them safer in the long run for everybody so i'll be doing a follow-up i'll be firing this up pretty soon i just have to build a new stand and then we'll get to see how everything works out here thanks for watching Please subscribe.